because it's in case it's like we have several issues and one of the main issues that we have right now is like we have a problem with the with one of your best cost controller that is used by PCLC. Mm -hmm. Basically it's like what it happens is like when we try to enable in case based access in PCLC, we tried to do we were booting and then we were getting this error like hey the partitions were not found. And then after doing something it turns out like the the host controller that we were using it didn't allow it basically like didn't support uh, to do transfers greater than greater so it was that page size so in this case it's like the page size it was 16k so basically it's like we need to we need to modify the driver to support segment transfers less than less than 16 days but when we when the project was submitted the basically it's like if they were yeah, they were rejected because because literally it's like we work with the fashion work to fix a hacker hardware, basically a hardware that didn't implement the cost controller interface. Right? So this kind of like we I mean as a backup we can support this I mean these patches as a out of the patches you know you know where uh, records. So this like I, I wonder if like if there is a way that we can submit this I mean this patches because it's like there are there are a lot of like more than one million devices several devices using this hardware that basically is no basically is like is not compatible with the cost controlling interface. So I would think somebody has any idea. So, Any, I guess so one of the things I, I would kind of put as maybe kind of the community point of view is that you know if there is hardware that is you know broken it kind of has this there's this mix of pragmatism with you know supporting stuff that's going to be out there for a long time upstream and also like how much of the core do we rework for broken hardware um, and it kind of depends on the maintainer how they're going to land on that because, you know, reworking part of the subsystem to be able to support that adds a lot of logic that they have to maintain indefinitely. Um, and if it's just for one controller, sometimes it's hard <laughs> to kind of, you know, reasonably keep that. But I, you know, um, at the same time, you know, there are a lot of quirks for a lot of, you know, classic Intel laptops sort of things that are out there that's supported. Um, and so to some extent, it's, I, I think would be discussing with the maintainer probably is the best, like that's the person you're going to have to convince on this. Um, I don't know, <laughs> unless we've got one in the room, that's, if there's going to be too yeah. much on that. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there any other like ways of isolating the changes to the driver so that you didn't have any Kind of more core logic changes to support it. I think that right now, like, yeah, I mean, we talk with Bar, and then he already, he already tried to minimize the amount of changes. Yeah. And the changes are like, I mean, if you count the number of lines, probably it's end to end thing divided in, in eight patches. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's like, yeah, the, the changes are not very intrusive. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think it sort of depends if you can sort of find a way to find a higher purpose for the additions that are sort of generally gen, then may, may have some other uses then in that case sort of like then you can sort of plug yourself into that general use but you're one of the users of and then this can be reused in other cases that sort of is one way to deal with these sort of quirks oh if that makes any sense what, what were the the actual concerns brought up by the the maintainers you you said that like it, it didn't seem like this was going to get merged, but I'm just looking at the the mailing list thread, and it doesn't look like they said there was, there's no knack I can see for the patches. So, well, basically, it's like the, the, the main issue is like controller that is used by Pixel didn't follow the standard the post controller interface. Basically, it's like they they mentioned that okay, the, the patches that you're sending is just fit this hacking hardware, and then we 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 don't want to add these patches to make this like. This hardware to work. So basically, so basically, it's like they were mentioning that we should push our hardware manufacturers to follow the HCA specification. But here, here is the problem: is like we already have these devices out there, and then it's like we cannot. I mean, with that software of that, we cannot update the hardware. So basically, it's like that's that's the main concern. And then we we gather some numbers, and it's not just like cell phones, many Samsung. 
using devices, they already are using this, uh, this host controller. So basically, it's like we, we put like the numbers and the other, there is like from one to 20 million devices out there using this host controller, but it, they don't have the problem right now because they are running with 4K, but if they want at some point to get to 16K, it's like it's not going to, it's not going to work. Basically, it's like that's, that's one of the main things that we, yeah, we wanted to discuss. And then, let's see. And I, yeah, let me also. Yeah, and another, another thing is like that, I mean, we want, we work on ideas. It's like, basically it's like the compatibility solutions. We, we, when we enable 16K pay sizes, and then we want to run 4K binaries, basically it's like, it, do, it doesn't work because when we load, when, when the binaries are loaded, they are loaded, but basically every segment in the binary is loading page size. And then it's like, because in, when, in the 4K, in the 4K binaries, the segments, Basically, it's like in the four, in the four K binaries, the segments are aligned at four K boundaries. L literally, it's like when when when, it, when the loader tries to load this, it's like basically it's like it it, fa it fails because in one page size you cannot put three types of permission. Like you cannot put read only, read write, and read executable. So basically, it's like one solution that we were discussing. It was like when we load the binary. We react basically is like we set all the all, all the permission for all the segments to retry executable, right? But because it has like like security implications, it's like we, we are not going to move forward with this solution. And the other solution that we I mean that we try to do is like to react basically is like use binary analysis to to convert one 4K binary to a 16K binary. And basically it's like the main thing that we were going to do is like read all the L segment headers to date uh, the alignment from 4K to 16K. Do the same with the program headers. Like basically, like convert the, four, the 4K L alignment to 16K L alignment. But we, I mean, basically, it's like after writing a program that parses all the L files and can compare field by field what it changed. It turns out that the dynamic section changes, the the G, the GOT table changes, the PLT section changes. So basically, it's like many things change, right? And then it's like, we, we, I mean, we were fixing the offsets for this. But then, we were, we were basically, it's like the main rock club came when we tried to, when, when we read the section that had code, like for example, dot text and dot ini, because I mean, these sections are supposed to have only code, but many compilers are embedding data into this code section. So basically, it's like when we were trying to fix the offsets, where what it was happening is that we, we were also trying to to change the data, the data, instru the data instruction. So basically, it's like this so the, this solution it was no no feasible. So another another solution that basically is like probably the last resource is to use uh, PKVM to run the apps, the 4K apps in a virtual machine. But the problem with that is like what is going to what what is going to happen. It's like all the performance gains with 16K exercises are going to be lost, right? If we are using uh, virtual machines. So I, I wonder if anybody has any other any idea about how to run 4K apps in a 16K exercise. So if somebody else has faced this problem. Cool. Uh, so I don't work on Android anymore, but um, if you're going to have the 4K apps running inside of the, the 16K thing with a with a KVM, you'll need to run a whole new zygote, presumably. Yeah. So that's the that's that's the last resource that that we are exploring. We are trying to find I mean, it's kind of like solutions kind of realign. I mean, do something with the L5 so we can run. What what's ARM's answer to this? Sorry? What's ARM's answer to this? Um, they're the one pushing the 16K. So they 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 previously pushed 1K, and we told them to get stuffed. Uh, and um, and now they're pushing 16K. Can we tell them to get stuffed again? Because um, th this is the problem. Because 
you know, what what's going to happen to all of the, the the apps that are on the Play Store? And longer term, the the goal is to have fewer ABIs on the Play Store. This is like over time. There, it's like we're we're going to compile the apps in the Play Store. I mean, we're going to ask the developers to compile the apps. And right now, it's like we're in talks with the developers. But it's going to take. I mean, this transition is going to take a good test to get all these apps compiled. But in the in the interim, we want to have a, a solution that to run for the apps. But there, there was a similar problem in the past that Android on 32, but they were using software floating point, uh, which was stupid. Um, you should have been using hardware floating point. Um, but we never supported hardware floating point because 64 bit happened. Um, but but also it would just add in like all of these complexities that you're describing now and you can't really fix it in the link or, uh, and, and so on. So the telling arms to get stuffed solution seems like like a good one. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's, it's like right now the, the memory capacity is increasing. And also you can see like the foldable phone, right? Mm -hmm. That they use I mean they use more memory because they need they they have this like they, 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 they need more space for the brain bookers to display, basically to display whatever you see in the screen. So they, they I mean basically these devices are going to be one of the main beneficiaries of the existing case. So that's that's the reason that for Android, it's very important to find a solution for for this. So, so yeah, I mean, so yeah. So basically, this is another approach that we have. No. Patching the ELF files to re, you know, rewrite all the relocations and rewrite the, the GOT and the PLT should be possible. It's just a, should be a matter of implementing all, because you just need to basically, you've pushed the segments further apart from each other. So you just need to find all of the relocations that cross the segment boundary and adjust them by how much you move the segments away from each other. I mean, basically, like that, I mean, that should be, I mean, in theory, doable. But here is the thing, it's like when you, when you compile that, for example, a C file, you get that dot object file there. And then it's like when you have all these dot object files, and then you say, okay, link it. During that moment, there are two types of relocation. There is the static relocations, and there are dynamic relocations. When you link all these object files, all the static relocations are gone. And then it's like the only thing that is left is the dynamic relocations that are used by, by the loader. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the main challenge with, with our binary analysis that we already lost all these is the static relocation tables. And then the only thing that we were, we, uh, we get is like dot relo dot time, time relocation. So basically it's like that, that's the reason that when we are, when, when we read the text segment, the in, the, sorry, the text section, the in section, it's like we use C code, we use C code and then in order to, uh, to basically fix the observes, in the, in the code, mm -hmm. like we basically in ARC in, in 64, all the instructions are 30, 32 bits. So basically, it's like we analyze these instructions and then we say, oh, if it's a call, fix the offset. If it's a call instruction, fix the offset. If it's an ADRP instruction, fix the offset. But the, the problem is like, for example, when you run the command object done, it's, it's doing like basically it's like it's, it's static, um, it's static disassembly. So basically, it's go. Every 32 bits, transform it that into into an instruction. Right. It does, you you don't know which constants are offsets and which constants are just numbers. Yeah. And the problem is like the, the compilers because they use optimization. For example, for the switch statements, when you compile that switch statement with the optimization, sometimes they embed a table inside the text code. So basically, it's like that, that, that's the reason that you have data in the text section that are supposed to have just code. So basically, it's like that, that's the problem that sometimes. Sometimes we do it right, sometimes we don't do it, and then it's very, I mean, it's, 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 a, hard, it's a hard problem to do this. And then in order to see convert this data, this, sorry, this problem, we try like recursive disassembly. And basically recursive disassembly, what it does is like in the L files, you have one place, like for example, all the functions and all the constructors in the, in the, C, in the C are stored in dot init array, dot finite array, and basically it's like, and then you have an, an, another section called .eh, right? 
where all the all the pointers to the functions are stored. So basically, like we try to find all the all the functions in the L file and try to this, uh, try to fix the offsets in all these uh, all uh, basically all codes. But it's like <coughs> with the problem with recursive disassembly is that sometimes you miss some functions. So basically, it's like linear disassembly and static disassembly are not that perfect. So basically, that's that's where we are stuck right now. Yeah. So it's another crazy idea. Just since we're, we're throwing things out there, uh, is that uh, you could map everything like you normally know, like read or read or read executable by default, and then uh, you know have like user fault FD or a six seg be a handler to say if you're trying to write to the data section, and just actually like in the signal handler check the address to see if that should be allowed, and then temporarily map it writable, allow the write, and then map it back non writable to to solve the problem of having to write map everything is as writable by default it would be awful for performance but it would you know solve some of your security issues uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we can i mean we can explore that solution this is You use the signal handler approach, you'll have to protect the, the pages as 4K pages, when then you'll split the VMAs and they'll no longer be 16K, and so you're kind of like defeating the whole thing anyway. I guess that's the case, like, what you can do is, like, I mean, we map the, we map one page size, I don't know, with, like, the read, the security read, permissions, and then when we try to write, basically, the signal handler, we say, okay, if it's a, it's a, it's, if it's a right of set, we say, okay, the signal handler will say, if it's a right of set, if it's a right of set, but, you, yeah, you'd have to, what do you do about execute? Which is like the scary one. Sorry. Execute. You, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean the security implications. Yeah. Bring RO data as as readable, executable. So yeah, you would you would still be able to execute RO data, which is not great, but ideally, if it's read only, at least you could you would know what you're executing. Actually, just to close on, I'm open, like opening up, up here uh, um, with a general comment. Is, is there anybody else that we should sort of um, put them in touch with? Uh, that it, maybe not in this room, but elsewhere in the conference that might be able to help with that sort of stuff. And this is an open question. We can think about it later on. Just sorry, no, I'm not thinking. Uh, no, I don't have any particular in mind. Just sort of thinking aloud, essentially, if there's anybody else that may not be present in this room that may be able to sort of assist. With the guys and yeah, sure. Guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got an opportunity because some people may be here. Yeah. All right. Yeah.